Good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. We're going to start the service out this morning by standing and singing Majesty. We're going to sing through it two times, so be ready to jump right into that second verse. Majesty. have a seat. Good morning, Emmanuel Baptist Church. Tell you what, yesterday afternoon and today have me thinking spring. But I'm ready for the bass to come out of the deep water and come up in the shallows. But I say it's wonderful to be here in each and every one of you on this beautiful February day. Um, it's great, and all of y'all out there, whenever, wherever you may be listening in, we welcome you all as well, and thank you, our whole technology crew up there that keeps this thing going. Thank you so much. That said, as we head into Valentine's Day, and as we head into Patrick's Day, and as we head into the Easter season, this time of year is for Christians, undoubtedly so, and as we move forward, our to-do list reflects that, y'all. I've got a whole bunch of announcements coming up for you. The first thing is, is in a rather topsy-turvy way, Jim is a couple years older than I am, but he had to explain the technology to me that this code on your bulletin, if you put it on your phone, it'll take you to the church website. I just learned that five minutes ago. It's pretty cool, but remember that it's on the bulletin there if you want to go to the church's website. Uh, also, a reminder, while we have it here today, there. Um, our prayer mailbox, please be considering our prayer mailbox. That is being prayed over. And John, it's Tuesday, right? Tuesday, if you want to come and be involved, that's an open prayer meeting. What time is that? 12.30. Have prayer meetings. That's it. Uh, wonderful. Be partaking that. We want to be the best praying church in the Kanawha. Most praying, I should say. Not necessarily the best. The most praying church in the Kanawha Valley. Uh, that said, and fun things this week, the Kanawha County Schools will be here uh, for Math. Field Day, we're happy that we can let them use our facility for that. Um, and a couple things coming up to remind you of is choir practice for Palm Sunday with Barbara Good will be Wednesday, February 8th at 7.30. That is this Wednesday. 
at 7.30 for choir practice for Palm Sunday. Remember, it's Easter. Also, next Saturday, there will be a trustee work day. Volunteers are needed. Lunch will be provided for that. And next Sunday, second Sunday lunch. We'll be having second Sunday lunch. <laughs> I, mean, I get y'all going. Yes. I know you're Baptist. Lunch gets you up and going and ready to go. I hear it's going to be soup and grilled cheese, which is just perfect uh, for what's probably going to be more winter-like weather next weekend. And then also Saturday, February 18th at Oakwood Baptist, there will be a Grandparenting Matters seminar. Um, and also a couple things I want to point out is the Bags of Love, which is being headed up by Julia. Please be considering that. And also continually... Uh, we want to be, it's cold out there, we're heading into spring, we're taking, constantly taking donations for our work with Brim Memorial and their food pantry, so bring your canned goods, bring clothing items, you can see it right there as you come in. Every time I see it, I'm always impressed with the work that we continually do because we've been helping out with that for a while now, so keep that up. And final thing I've got for you here before we get the call to worship, don't, I have access right now media. I have been in Route Now Media this work, and it's almost overwhelming all the different studies and ministries and things that you can engage in. Like I said, there's Tony Evans, there's Francis Chan, there's Tim Tebow, there's Dave Ramsey. There's all kinds of stuff you can get into and be engaged with. It's a really cool thing that's being provided through us through the Right Now Media. Oh, please use it. Have it. Let's use it. That said, let's transition over to worship, and I'm going to Psalms 119, just a wonderful, beautiful psalm about the, the word of the Lord, and I'm going to verse 41 through 48. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty. For I seek thy precepts, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Let us pray, folks. Heavenly, gracious, good Father, we humbly come before you, we bow before your glory, Bow before your sovereign authority over your creation, all that we are and all that we have, Father God. And we admit our failings, we admit our destitution before the throne, and we rejoice in the hope, we rejoice in your glory, rejoice in the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may be lifted up into your presence and walk with you in your presence and be your kingdom, Father. And we pray that you move us forward. We pray that you move this church forward. We pray that you continually are building us and uplifting us, that we might be doing kingdom work in all that we do, that we might be glorifying you in every final thought, every action of the day, and that your spirit will dwell mightily and reign over us, Father. And we thank you for the opportunity we have to serve you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we stand and sing again, I want to thank Jason for reminding everybody that I am a couple of years older than you. <laughs> just a couple, though. Not, not twice as old, but just a couple. Uh, I also want to remind everybody that in association with Second Sunday Lunch next Sunday, we are going to have an old-fashioned singing convention. Uh, Back in the 50s, when I was a kid, we had singing schools. And you'd go to singing school every night. They would teach you how to read music. And then at the end of that singing school, they always had a singing convention where we would get people to come up and make up a choir, people in the audience, solos. We just sang. We sang hymns. We just picked up a book and started singing. That would go on until everybody got tired. We're going to do that this Sunday coming up 
in association with the second Sunday lunch. So I want you to know that we're going to uh, let the choir, people who want to sing in the choir on the stage, to go through the lunch line first. Uh, and the rest of you will be able to sing along while you're eating, as long as you don't spit food on each other. Okay? <laughs> so that being said, let's stand and continue singing this morning. Heaven came down. Jesus saves. Thank you. 
congregation will come and lead us in our offertory prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every good and great blessing that you have given us. For our abundance, take from it, return it to you by yourself and be pray. Good morning. It is so good to be with you this morning. I am so glad to see all your smiling faces. We are continuing in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So if you left your bulletin in your Bible last week, you're right where you need to be. If not, if you would get your Bible out and turn to the uh, fifth chapter. We're going to pick up reading the last verse of chapter 5 into the first few verses of chapter 6. And so if you are able to stand, I invite you to stand as we read God's word together. Paul writes to the church at Corinth, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's gift in vain, For he says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every May the Lord bless the reading and our hearing of his word today. Join me in a word of prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, you are the one true living God, Holy Trinity. We thank you for giving us today. We thank you for giving us this place, this sanctuary, that we can step aside from the busyness of life to be still and quiet in your presence, to come corporately and publicly to worship you and to adore you and to proclaim praise to you. And Lord, in these moments, as we come to your word, may your spirit do his work in each of our hearts and lives to give us understanding that we may take that truth and not simply hear it, but allow it to be applied to the very depths of our being. And Lord, we pray that you might use this word to draw us ever closer to you. For those of us who walk with you, may we lean tighter to into your embrace. And Lord, any that need to choose you, may today be that day of salvation. Lord, I ask that you take these very simple words I've prepared 
and permit them to be a means by which you speak your message to each and every one of our hearts. God, we love you. Lord, we thank you for loving us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. You may be seated. Again today, we're in the book of 2 Corinthians. Corinthians is such an important book because it is a book that Paul wrote to a church that was in the midst of excess of everything. Hear what I said? The excess of everything. Excess of chasing philosophy, the excess of finance, the excess of relationships of every sorts and ways and shapes, the excess of worship and theology and everything else you can think of. Not a whole lot different from today. Because people were searching to find something to fill the empty void in their lives. And Corinth being on the main thoroughfare of trade provided people with all sorts of opportunity. It was a place where Paul came and with others planted this church. It's a church that Paul has a great heart for. And as he's writing this second letter to them, trying to correct some further false teachings that have come to them, he spends this section of his letter just highlighting this love that God has for us. Did you hear that? God loves you. Would you turn to the person beside you and tell them, God loves you? Okay, turn to the person on the other side, we don't miss anybody, and tell them, God loves you. Hear those words. So many people today think they are unloved. So many people walk through life feeling totally alone and helpless and hopeless. And it's only been exponentially grown in the last few years. And what Paul wants us to hear is that God loves us. And that love that God has for us is powerful. The first thing Paul wants the church to understand, and through that letter I think God wants us to understand, is how great and powerful that love is. And we begin in seeing it displayed in all of its fullness where? At the cross of Christ. It was at the cross of Christ where Jesus Christ, God the Son, had left the portals of heaven, left the continual adoration of all the angels, his place at the right hand of the Father, and he came into this earthly existence taking on human flesh, living in a singular moment, in a singular time, and, and intentionally by his own will limiting his power so that he could walk here on earth that he could show us this life that God has desire for each and every one of us to live. And then to go to that cross and to endure the suffering, the pain, the humiliation, and then to, at the end of the moment, give his life. And in that picture at the cross, and we'll look more at this when we come to Easter, but don't miss... When Jesus died on the cross, he is the only person to ever die alone. And by that I'm saying, all humanity had left, all his disciples had fled. And in the moment of his death, God the Father had to turn his back, for he could not look upon his son, because the one who had been perfect had become sin for us. And it's that love that was displayed there on the cross that then is displayed in Paul's own life because Paul had been a great persecutor of the church. And now he's the great advocate of the church and the church planter of all planters of that day. He's had a complete radical change and transformation. It's not just that Paul's life was reordered. It wasn't that it was just remodeled. It was radically changed. And he is a living example of that love and the power of that love of God. And guess what? Each of us are examples of that love that have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, as Paul tells us, and we looked at this last week, we are then called to be what? Okay, it's up there on the screen. It's a cheat sheet. We're called to be what? Ambassadors. That means we are children of God. 
who are waiting to be taken to be present with him forever and eternity. And for the meantime, we live here in this world, not as the world lives, but as children of God. Therefore, we are his ambassadors. And we get to have the privilege to announce to this world that first of all, God loves them. And that that is such an important truth because that love is powerful. And through that love, Jesus was nailed to the cross and remained there and then gave his life for us so that our sin debt could be covered and we could be redeemed. What Paul goes on to say is that that invitation that we get to give is how Jesus, as he's on the cross, the perfect Lamb of God who was sinless, who had never done anything ever, 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 ever wrong, took upon himself sin so that he, the one who was without sin, became sin. So that that cross, as he hung there, he defeated sin once and for all. Before the cross, friends, all humanity was in its grip. All humanity could not escape the consequence of sin, which is what? Death. When Adam was in the garden before Eve was created, God took Adam aside and they had a little conversation, one of those daily afternoon walks. He says to Adam, when you eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, will surely die. See, death comes because sin enters. And so Christ on the cross took that sin, sin for all time, all humanity, the sin of my life, the sin of your life, the sin of the person sitting beside you, the sin of all t- people for all times, so that sin could be defeated and conquered. And his death on the cross frees us from that grip of sin. And then his resurrection gives us all authority and power over death itself. So that for those who believe, death is just a doorway. Death is just the moment when we, as a follower of Jesus, take our final breath on this side and we open our eyes in eternity. It's that moment when we get to see our Redeemer, our Savior, our King, face to face. It's in that moment that all the aches and pains and sufferings and disease and illness that this old sinful flesh Drones upon us constantly will be gone. In that moment, we will really truly understand life and living life. God intends it. And on this side, we get a taste of it. Because we no longer live under the condemnation of sin, but as the adopted, loved children. That is what? Our message. That's the message we take to the world. It is broken. It's dying. Friends, every one of us in the coming week will encounter people who are not yet in the ark of salvation. They may take several forms in our lives. They may be the person who takes care of us at the grocery store. It may be the person that we work beside, or we go to school beside, or we recreate beside. It may be the person that lives down the road from us. It may be even in our own family. But those who are outside the ark of salvation are lost. They are lost because of sin. Because sin separates us from God. It's what God warned Adam about. That when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In that instant, he would lose that relationship he had with God. God was his creator. He was God's creation and the crown of creation. And he enjoyed opportunity to walk with God. And see God face to face. It was all lost. But through the cross of Christ. We regain all that Adam lost. But even more. Because Adam never had the privilege to call God father. But God in his 
wisdom, sovereignty, and authority has declared. You and I don't only know him as our creator, and he is. Every human life is a creation of God. But we are also so we're given the privilege that when we talk to God, we can call him Abba, Father, our Father, guard in heaven. We had to do that. And that's part of the message that we get to share with those who are lost, that are in need. Those that are separated from God. Those who have not entered into salvation. They're facing great danger. Because Sin separates us from God. And if we die without Christ, we are eternally separated from God. Christ Jesus came to this world for one reason. And that was to deal with our sin. He came to redeem us. He came to buy us back. He came to make it possible for us to re-enter into this relationship with Him and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And that that relationship would have great blessings here and now that we can enjoy that are just a little foretaste of all that heaven will hold. And then to know that one day we will, without question, be able to stand in his presence and be able to see him and not die. Because of what Christ has done in becoming sin for us. That's made us the righteousness before. See, it's what I've said before, and I'm just going to repeat it here. I'm sorry, it's re- so important. The moment that I confess my sin to God, and I ask Jesus Christ to come into my life, in that instance, Christ Jesus takes his robe of righteousness, and he wraps it around my filthy sinfulness, so that from that second on, when God looks at me, you know what he sees? His beloved son. His sacrifice, his blood covers my sin. And it brings full payment for the debt that that sin demands. As Jesus died on the cross, that friend is what Don Byram deserves. My sin deserves punishment and the wrath of God. But in the gift of salvation that God has given... He's given me his robe of righteousness. He's wrapped me so that I can now stand before God. And I don't have to bow my head in fear and terror, but I bow my head in reverence. And I get to speak to him and talk to him as a father and a child. And that special relationship, he has done that. For Christ Jesus has come to pay the debt of sin and to save us sinners. No one else will save us. There is no other way to be saved. It's only Jesus. That's what Christ has done. And so thereby, for what Christ has done on the cross, makes it possible for us then to have this right standing before God Almighty. And to have the relationship that that right standing brings. To know that he is engaged and involved in my life every moment of the day. To realize that he puts a protection around me so that as I walk through this life, I don't have, I don't have to deal with all the demonic powers and the things that take place. Because I'm held in mighty hand. Yes, they will assail me. And yes, they will come upon me. And yes, they will try their best with their fiery darts to get my eyes off Jesus. But if I keep my eyes on Jesus, he has already run the victory. And I walk in his victory every day. I walk in the assurance that I'm accepted by God. I walk with the truth in my heart that no longer do I need to fear God as being afraid cowering, but I now know him and be in relationship with him and enjoy that relationship. I can have that right standing. And God offers that gift to everyone. Jesus' death on that cross was for everyone. 
everyone. Every individual. Every man, every woman, every child. Every grandparent, every aunt and uncle, every friend, every stranger. Get the point? Everyone. See, there was no one excluded from the cross work of Christ. That salvation was paid for by Jesus Christ, who is God the Son. It was paid so that everyone could have this salvation. It's offered to every individual. And when it's offered, friends, We have to accept it. Scripture's clear on that. It's offered to everyone. And thankfully, he offers it more than once because sometimes we say no to good things. Sometimes we are just so prideful that we think we know. Or there's times that Satan deceives us into thinking we're too bad. Or whatever the case may be. That we pass by. We stiff arm Jesus to a distance. We squelch the work of the Spirit within us as he tries to convict us, show us this deep need that every individual has. But God offers the gift. He offers it again. He offers it again. As long as we are drawing breath on this side of the grave, God is offering. Paul, Paul gives through this letter to the Corinthian church and through this letter to you and I. See the gift. Jesus stands at the door of our lives. He is knocking. He's asking. He's requesting. Calling you by name. But see, you have to open the door and let him in. He will not jimmy the lock. He will not force the door. He could. He's God. He could break the door down. See, he didn't come to force us. He came to invite us. He will not violate that free will that he's given us. He's wooing. He's calling. He's convicting. He's stirring within us. That still small voice within us calling us once more to come. And so Paul says, with such boldness, receive the gift because today is the day. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. In this very moment, right now, at 1140, Sunday morning, that gift is being offered to you. Whether you're sitting in this room or you're watching online, that gift is being offered to you. Those of you who've received it, you know that. And you know the change it makes. You've experienced the touch, you've experienced the redemption, you've experienced the taste of true life. And you, like me, are anticipating that day when we get there. There may be somebody this room, watching online today or sometime later, that's not true for you. You haven't taken the gift and opened it. You haven't received this salvation that was paid for at the highest price. Jesus gave his life for you. He's inviting you today to receive that gift. To make his death on the cross matter because we have two choices and it's that way with every gift I gave Tom here one of our deacons a gift he'd either accept it or reject it right Tom one or the other accept or receive Rece accept and receive not for those who receive the gift in an instant by the work of the Holy Spirit, 
He cleanses us from the inside out. He declares us clean in his presence. He puts under the blood of Christ every sin of our past in the moment. His spirit comes and dwells within us. Makes his home right within us. So that now we don't live through this life at the whims of the currents of the culture of the day. But we instead walk with him and he guides us so that we don't fall into the pits and the holes and, the, and, the, and stumble over the, the, the challenges and obstacles. But he guides us each and every day. That we begin our morning with his presence. We walk every second of the day with his presence. And we end the day with his presence. And while we're sleeping, unaware of the events, we're in his presence. And he is caring for us, watching over us, protecting us, guiding us. And when we open his word, he instructs us. So we can fully understand this gift he's given. That's if we accept the gift. But if I say no, if I stiff arm the call from the Lord to come to salvation, if I think that it's not for me, if Satan can convince us that our life is just too messed up, you might want to say to me, Pastor Don, you just don't know about my past. I don't. He does. I still invite you today. Because today's the day. He wants nothing to hold you back. He wants you to come to him and not try to clean yourself up first, not try to get a bath in so you then can, then can come. See, that's Satan's greatest deceit to so much of the world is to think that they've got to somehow fix something before they can come to Jesus. Friends, we'll never fix it. We just can't. We just have to step by faith and to receive this gift. And if you reject it, then you miss it. And if your life ended, you will spend eternity separated from God. See, God doesn't send any of us to hell, but many people choose to go there. They don't want to accept the gift. If you don't accept the gift of salvation, you breathe your last. There is no other option. All rights. Is it appointed to man once to die? Then judgment. It's on this side of the grave you get to make that choice. And in this moment, in this hour of this day, Jesus is again making that offer to you. Because today is the day of salvation. It is God's favor today upon you to once again knock at the heart's door. To make the invitation to Jesus. To let go and receive him. To drop all the stuff that this world that you're carrying to hold tightly to you. To experience a radical change like Paul experienced. Like those who may be around you have made that choice. Christ wants you to have that same experience. He wants you to know him, his love, to walk in that love, just as so much. This morning, the choice is set before you. You can choose to accept the gift of Christ, be robed in his righteousness, be able to approach his throne, have the privilege to call God Heavenly Father. You can reject the gift. You can continue to stand condemned before God. Just be in jeopardy of being eternally separated from God in a place called hell. Continual torment and suffering. Separated from God's very presence for all eternity. Life would end. Our rejection of this grace that God offers it's our choice. It's offered. He won't stop offering it. This side of the grave. Today's the day. We don't know about tomorrow. We have no guarantee about the next breath. 
face the day. This is the day. And my invitation as an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ is to you. Choose him today. Receive him as Lord and Savior. Allow him to have eternity. invite you. Father, we thank you so much for your wonderful this gift of salvation. Lord, we thank you that you have given us your word so we can have it presented to us. Your spirit helps us to begin to grasp an understanding of this wonderful grace that you've offered. Amazing grace. Grace that's so much greater than Lord Jesus, I pray today, every heart present and those that are watching, for those of us who know you, may we walk in the truth of that relationship. May we walk as your righteous here in this world, still to it as countercultural. Lord, may we walk boldly. Lord Jesus, I pray that those that haven't made that step, that in your mercy and your grace, you would call in their heart. Invite them. Hear your May they Realize today is day is Lord. In a few moments, sing a song as we finish for you. And Lord, it is our prayer that it would be a time of invitation for me. And may your spirit be your invitation. Invitations to invitation those of us who know you to refresh our walk with you. Your invitation for us to make a commitment to be a part of the body. So Lord, I pray that you would just guide each heart appropriate way so that we may hear your calling. We may respond. Lord, we would recognize with you we have life. Without you. Use this time according to your hands. All things bring. Ask this in your precious Our invitation is threefold. If you have not accepted the Lord Jesus, today is the day. If you're walking with the Lord, refresh that walk. Let him bring revival afresh because the world desperately needs to hear our message. And if you're not a member of our church family, the invitation is extended to you. Come. Be a part. It's what we're called to be. Come together publicly as the church. We invite you to be a member. God is leading you. We invite you.
You may be seated. This being the first Sunday of the month, it is our practice to come to the Lord's table. This is his invitation to those who have accepted the gift of salvation. Whether you're a member of our church or not is not what's important. It's that you are in that relationship with him because it's his invitation. He invites us to come to partake of the elements so that we might be reminded the price paid for our redemption and that we might once again acknowledge this wonderful love he's offered to all. As the deacons have come, the scriptures tell us on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks for it. Then he broke it and gave it to his disciples. In like manner, he took a cup and gave thanks for it. And after he'd been blessed, he gave it to his disciples to drink. In a few moments, the deacons are going to be serving you a bread and a cup. He would take and hold those to all have been served that we might eat and drink together as the family of God. We might eat and drink together as the body of Christ. I'm going to ask Tom to have a blessing the bread and cup for us. Shall we pray, please? Heavenly Father, it's time for us to acknowledge you again, Father. Monthly sacrament of communion. We as as humans are weak in many ways and need to be reminded of as as the pastor Don has has spoken we he has spoken before not today but we are adopted by you your son who died came and died for our sin we have the free will as we we want but your word father a great faith that you have sent your son to die for our sin. He came to take sin away for us to be adopted and become ambassadors. Help us to fulfill that work in every way, not just to tell people good things, but to tell
scriptures tell us that Jesus said, this bread represents his body, broken for us. He said, as oft as we eat of this bread to do so, remembering him. Remembering how he gave his life on the cross for each and every one. So I invite you as we eat the bread this morning, remember our Redeemer. he gave the disciples the cup he said this cup represents my blood shed so in a new covenant between God and man through the remission of sin he said told them as oft as they drank of the cup to do so remembering him let's drink together celebrating this new covenant this new relationship we have with Christ may we remember his precious blood shed for us shed by our Lord and Savior It says in the Gospels that they sang a hymn went out to the Mount of Olives. So I'm going to invite you to sing a verse of Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Then as we go forth, may we be those ambassadors of the great message of salvation. Stand with me as we sing. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. God bless you.